Here are the top five amazing new buffs to races in Morden Kanan's Monsters of the Multiverse. Janassi. So someone at D&D HQ clearly has a thing for elementals, because Janassi got slammed with good stuff in this book. Firstly, they all get dark vision now. Awesome. And they can now be small as well as medium. Adorable. More importantly though, they all got some bonus free spells. Let's break it down. One. Air Genasi catch up to the rest of the group by getting a damage resistance, lightning, and an improved walking speed of 35 feet. They haven't lost anything in exchange. This is just a free upgrade to the Windy Boys. They also get the Shocking Grasp and Featherfall spells, in addition to Levitate, with the downside being you can only cast Featherfall and Levitate from levels 3 and 5 respectively. You can cast those leveled spells for free a number of times per long rest equal to your proficiency bonus. That's pretty good. I'll take a couple of extra spells at the cost of getting them a little later in the game. Friendly reminder, Levitate is busted. 2. Fire Genasi can now cast Flame Blade when they reach 5th level, and they get Burning Hands from 3rd. Flame Blade is pretty good. It essentially gives any class that wants it a 3d6 damage dealing weapon while still holding a shield. I can see this one being great on a War Cleric build especially. 3. Water Janassi lose Shape Water, getting it replaced with Acid Splash. That kind of sucks. Shape Water is amazing and Acid Splash is Acid Trash. They also get Create and Destroy Water at 3rd level and Water Walk at 5th. Honestly, I don't really care for these changes. Dark Vision aside, Water Janassi probably got a downgrade here. However, we've still got to talk about 4. Earth Janassi. Earth Genasi now only get Pass Without Trace starting at 5th level, but in exchange, they get the cantrip Blade Ward. Blade Ward is a garbage cantrip that costs 1 action and gives you resistance to bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing damage for 1 round. The problem is, spellcasters are always better off using an action to cast a real spell, or to run away if they're in trouble. You don't want to be wasting a full action and one of your limited cantrip choices just to get bonked on the head a little less hard. However, Earth Janassi can cast Blade Ward as a bonus action, a number of times equal to their proficiency per long rest. That is awesome. There are tons of powerful classes, like Paladins or Feywanderer Rangers, with free bonus actions to abuse this. It basically turns you into a Barbarian for the turn that you use it, while still being able to concentrate on other spells. Just remember this only works against weapon attacks. It won't help you against fall damage. Just don't jump off any cliffs and you'll be fine. Kenku. Kenku got three awesome buffs in this book. Firstly, the Kenku mimicry traits that allowed you to replicate the noise of any other creature is now more reliable. It used to be that you had to roll deception when you did it, whereas now it has a set DC of 8 plus your proficiency plus your charisma if someone wants to see if you're faking. Now, the old way did mean that if you had expertise in deception, you could boost your mimicry to insane levels. However, you don't even need proficiency in deception for this to be pretty good, so it's overall more reliable. Second buff, Kenku no longer have limited speech. See, Kenku used to have this thing where they could only speak using their mimicry trait, but now you can just talk, because everyone realized that was dumb. If you want to impose that limit on your Kenku for roleplay, go for it, but it's definitely not something that should be slammed on an entire race. However, the biggest buff comes with the new Kenku recall trait. Kenku now get two skills of your choice right off the bat. In addition, you can give yourself advantage on any skill check you have proficiency in a number of times per long rest equal to your proficiency bonus. This is crazy good. Kenku are now straight up the best skill expert race. A level 1 rogue Kenku can make a skill check with expertise and advantage. You basically start the game by choosing two skills and saying, when it comes to these, I kick ass. I really like this. Any build that wants to grapple can soup up their athletics, and any build that wants to bang everyone can fire up their persuasion. When it comes to doing one thing really well, Kenku are now the ultimate race for the job. Unless that thing is flying. They still can't fly. I sure hope I don't encounter any weird character comedy in this cave. Hello there, young one. Oh, for God's sake, who are you? I am Gandalf the Fifty Shades of Grey. I'm a wizard who fights with a whip. Oh, why? Did you know that when J.R.R. Tolkien wrote Harry Potter, he used World Anvil to track his notes? I, I don't think any of that's right, Gandalf the Fifty Shades. All hail World Anvil! Long may ye reign! Oh, for God's sake, I'll just do the ad read. Give it here. 
World Anvil is the ultimate world building platform where you can create, organize, and share your world and original characters. Like Gandalf, the Fifty Shades of Grey. You could have stopped that from happening! World Anvil has inbuilt interactive map making, stat block and character creation, and a campaign manager to keep on top of everything. For game masters or writers who want to build immersive and exciting worlds, it is the ultimate weapon. Keep things organized and maintain a healthy relationship with your creative process. Grab a World Anvil subscription today with an insane 40% discount by following the link below. Kobolds. So Kobolds got turned inside out by this book. They took a massive nerf when Pack Tactics was ripped away, but they also got some really cool buffs to compensate. One. Kobolds no longer have a meltdown when they're faced with direct sunlight, like a vampire or a discord mod. That's pretty dope. Two, they get Kobold Legacy, giving them proficiency in any skill or advantage on saving foes against being frightened or a free sorcerer cantrip. I love this. Free Firebolt? Hell yeah. But the biggest buff here is Draconic Cry. This sort of replaces their old Grovel, Cower, and Beg ability. Now, as a bonus action up to your proficiency modifier per long rest, you can do a roar. It gives you and your allies advantage on all attack rolls against all enemies within 10 feet of you who hear you roar until the start of your next turn. This is great. You can do this before attacking to give yourself advantage on every attack and set up your allies for a crazy turn. It also partners up insanely well with the Elven Accuracy feat. Just thanks to this ability, a party of four elven fighters with a pet kobold who only ever screams would legitimately be a terrifying threat. But just having advantage is great. Giving it to your allies guarantees your rogue's sneak attack and doubles everyone's chances at a crit. All things considered, I think kobolds are now better as a result of this book, mechanically speaking. Flavor-wise, they maybe lost something with no more pack tactics or grovel, cower, and beck. However, they are now really versatile and really powerful. Probably in the top five races in the game, in my opinion. Trance. Do you remember elves? Arguably the best race in the game? Well, they're better now. The first half of the ability is the same. You don't need to sleep, magic can't put you to sleep, and you can get a long rest in four hours of meditation. But now, there's more. Now, anytime you finish your trance, you can gain two proficiencies, each with a tool or weapon of your choice from the player's handbook. They last until you finish your next long rest, at which point you can swap them out or take them again. The weapon proficiency is okay. I could maybe see some elf clerics taking proficiency with long swords, for example, but the real kicker here is the tool proficiency. This can nab you a Thieves' Tools and Disguise Kit bonus anytime you're planning a heist. Or Leather Worker's Tools, if you've just defeated a Displacer Beast and want to craft a Cloak of Displacement. You can set yourself up to craft potions, poisons, or magic items, or you can be a total chad and give yourself proficiency with warships. Remember, mounts and vehicles are considered tools in the player's handbook, for some reason. Now that's great for elves, but the final buff in this book is great for everybody. The Short Rest Massacre. I'm calling it right now. Short rests are getting cut in D&D 5.5. How do we know that? Well, every reference to them has been kicked out of this book. There are tons of races that get abilities that recharge on a short rest. Eladrin Elves Face Step, Goliath's Stone Endurance, etc, etc. Well, now they don't. Instead, you get to use that ability a number of times per long rest, equal to your proficiency bonus. Why are they assassinating short rests? I have no idea. However, I do know that all of these races are now better. Usually a party is taking maybe one short rest a day, which would give an Eldrin Elf two uses of their face step. Now you start the game with two uses of your face step that you can fire off anytime you want, and you finish the game with six. You're not only getting to use these abilities more, you get more control over when you can use them too. Shifters and Shadar Kai really get a big win here. Only being able to shift once per short rest really knocked shifters down a peg. Shadar Kai can now teleport their proficiency per long rest. A massive upgrade from the hard once per day they used to have. That is huge. Complete with the new trance ability, Shadar Kai are like amazing now. 
But hold on a damn second. Where are all the new races and subclasses in this book? Well, there aren't any. But the new Kingpin Rogue subclass is releasing at the end of this month. Plus some beautiful watercolored maps. If I could work out a way to bang a piece of artwork, I would. You can support the channel and catch all of that by clicking the link up here or the link down there. Also, remember to like and subscribe, check out other videos on the channel, and I'll see you next time.